The Bohemian Club. The, as you say, the Bohemian Club. That's where all those rich Republicans go up and stand naked against redwood trees, right? I've never been to the Bohemian Club, but you ought to go. It'd be good for you. Get some fresh air. Ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. No president should fear public scrutiny of his program, for from that scrutiny comes understanding, and from that understanding comes support or opposition, and both are necessary. I am not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people, for I have complete confidence and the response and dedication of our citizens whenever they are fully informed. I not only could not stifle controversy among your readers, I welcome it. This administration intends to be candid about its errors, for as a wise man once said, an error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. We intend to accept full responsibility for our errors, and we expect you to point them out when we miss them. Without debate, Without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed, and no republic can survive. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Solon decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. And that is why our press was protected by the First Amendment, the only business in America specifically protected by the Constitution, not primarily to amuse and entertain, not to emphasize the trivial and the sentimental, not to simply give the public what it wants, but to inform, to arouse, to reflect, to state our dangers and our opportunities, to indicate our crises and our choices, to lead, mold, educate, and sometimes even anger public opinion. 
This means greater coverage and analysis of international news, for it is no longer far away and foreign, but close at hand and local. It means greater attention to improved understanding of the news, as well as improved transmission. And it means, finally, that government at all levels must meet its obligation. <laughs>
That Marty thing was like... We don't have time in the documentary to show you an entire tour of the 2,700-acre compound in the middle of the gorge. Besides the fact we didn't even have time to see but about 20% of it in between dodging security personnel. Unfortunately, we were using digital tapes that were one hour. Several of the confrontations were not caught on tape. We had sheriff's deputies, secret service, you name it, question us on who we were. We just told them we were with the hillbillies. That's where the bushes stay, you know, because we've got Texas accents. Just one of many signs sporting French with skulls adorned with other trappings of death. We also saw signage with Latin and other ancient languages. Now we're about to let you see a little bit of what's going on with the great owl. Getting bold. This is the owl. I'm getting this owl. Here you can see the bottom of the stone owl with the altar and the eternal flame, a Aladdin lamp style urn that continually burns here around, we're told. And here's a side shot from about 30 yards away of Moloch, the Canaanite deity to which children were sacrificed to in Babylon. And yet another slowed down close shot. Again, the internal flame burning, the altar. Uh, the bottom extremities of the 40 plus foot stone deity and uh, there is a shot of its head as well again we've slowed down this video because we only actually had about five seconds of it on our hidden cameras so you can have a chance to get a closer look at it you will see it during the ceremony 
Speaking of the ceremony, we were on the left-hand side of the lake, about 150 yards downstream beneath those large redwood trees. Much of the ritual you're going to witness took place on the right-hand side of the lake and at the northern tip beneath Moloch. Keep in mind the scale of the idol compared to those giant redwood trees. It's at least 45 feet tall. Now the daytime vantage you're witnessing is basically the vantage that we shot the ceremony from at night. This is America, and it's been going on for 120 plus years in Northern California. This is not some new fad. We're talking about something deadly serious with its roots in ancient history. had the bright idea of going into one of the camps, which is one of the few mistakes he made. Not that we both didn't make a few. Oh, and my mistake? I just forgot my fake name. We had already been questioned three separate times by the Bohemian Club Security, Secret Service, and Sonoma County Sheriff's Department. To evade discovery, we decided to try for one of the more remote areas of the camp, according to our map, the most southerly side. 
and a lookout point, an observation deck over the Russian River. While Mike Hansen was watching for the sheriff's deputies that were down the path and over the bridge in a guard shack, I began to shoot the video you just witnessed. After we turned the camera off, one of the Sonoma County Sheriff's deputies showed up and began asking us why we were filming. We calmly told him we were just sightseeing as members of the Bohemian Club. The point that has to be made here, though, is they do have hidden cameras because there's no way that they would have been able to witness us videotaping from where the guard shack was located. And then upon walking back by the guard shack, we actually witnessed banks of television screens and wires leading up into the redwoods and disappearing. Also visible from the observation deck is the famous sunning area for the establishment lackeys and their pomps. Here you can see some of the fine carpeting out on the floaty. The long history of men enjoying themselves has even been written about in the gossip column of the San Francisco Chronicle, writing that a man on his own often gets invited back to the camp by gay bohemians. Even 100-year-old annals have admitted the homosexual activities. After escaping the sheriff's department, Mike and I traveled high into the hills to wait until dark and the beginning of the cremation of care ceremony. Before the cremation of care, all the Bohemian Club members begin a massive feast of revelry. After the feast, cult members travel from the main dining area under the trees out to the eastern side of the lake where they congregate and prepare themselves to properly thank their deity. Again, the 3,000 plus year old Moloch.